Welcome back to Reimagine 2020. I'm Yona Hockhauser, and I'm glad to be joined by Sarah Sun, VP of Global Business at Huobi. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, so thank Reimagine for organizing the conference, and thank you for having me. Uh, our pleasure. Well, uh, first, for, for those of us, uh, of our viewers who aren't familiar with you and your work, do you want to give us a little background about kind of who you are and how you got into blockchain? Yeah, sure. So um, my background, uh, I started my, my career in the financial capital of the world, New York City, um, working with uh, multinational consulting companies like Boston Consulting Group, Deloitte Consulting, and Ernst & Young, and primarily focused on the financial services industry um, after I got my MBA in financial analysis. And I spent years advising banking and capital market groups for major banks, um, hedge funds, B firms, and uh, investment, uh, investment management corporations. So traditional financial services is industry I understand well, but because I understood the space, I know there were limitations. And um, you know, traditional finance rooted in very, very old practices and biases. So some of which we have created a financial ecosystem that isn't always inclusive. And there are a lot of you know, inefficiency and challenges that exist in the traditional finance. And because I, I was in New York and you know, that's where consensus is, that's, that's where you know, a lot of the crypto um, events were happening. And um, I just got to know crypto and I know, you know like there's new way to do things and uh, which is how I get into crypto and blockchain. So I eventually decided to join um, crypto space and let it at uh, Hobi after, you know, um, I, I, I looked at uh, um, several other opportunities as well. So having worked with some of the top financial institutions before, I just wanted to join a company that, you know, not only had the vision and the ability to innovate the financial industry, but also the infrastructure to scale globally, like companies I've worked with. Um, you know, Hobi as a company, we, we have um, more than 1,500 people now, and we have 18 different business units. And um, it's, it's one of the largest and leading exchange in the world. And, um, and it's a very trustworthy one since you know, we put um, uh, system, system uh, stability and uh, risk management and uh, security above everything else. So that's why I chose to join Hobi. And um, you know, we move fast and constantly you know, with, with blockchain and digital assets. But uh, we have many of the protocols and procedures in place that you expect from a multinational organization. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, yeah, I think that's, that's why I, I kind of want to ask you about. It's really interesting because you do come from this traditional financial world where you know EY, where things are kind of set in stone. Things move very, very slowly in the financial, a traditional financial world, and and now you get to work for Huobi, and you know the blockchain world, the cryptocurrency world is so new, so fresh. It's always innovating. It's growing so fast. You know. How does it feel? Does it, does, how does it feel to be on, on, on now the, the, the kind of fast growing side of things, the, the more dynamic, innovative side of things? Do you, do you kind of feel like you were let off your leash kind of, uh, you know, going from the traditional restrictive financial world to now the more exciting and new and dynamic cryptocurrency world? Well, yes, it's fascinating to see how things can move so quickly and how, you know, um, you know, in, in the, there's a saying saying that, you know, a, a day in crypto is a year in the traditional world. And I, I think, you know, that's kind of dramatic to say, but it's, it's definitely half the point. You know, like in 2017, you see ICO was so booming and that's, that it, it attracts so much, so much uh, attention, so much resources into crypto space and make the whole bull market in 2017, 2018. And it's so fascinating to see. But the cycle moves really, really fast. And then you see the bear market coming in. But then like in the beginning of 2019, there, that's where you know, traditional um, institutions were coming into the market. And that's what we need to really scale the market. And within a year from Hobie's data, you see this dramatic change of the, of the whole trading volume structure that in the beginning of 2019, you see only like 18, 16, 18% of trading volume were from institutions. And by now we have more than 50%. That's, wow. our, that's from traditional yeah, institutions. That's just fascinating. You can't see this kind of infrastructure and um, just a whole like, you know, the whole structure changing in any of the other industries that this fast. And with the DeFi season is booming and, you know, a year uh, from, from like last year, about the same time, it was just a, a new concept. Everybody was still learning and, and you don't know how DeFi is going to go. And uh, it, it's just a concept. And now 
is, is, is attracting 10 billion, you know, total value unlocked. It's, it's just amazing to see how fast is this industry can, can, can move forward and can, can be innovated. And besides, you know, the crypto space 24 seven, never close. Right, for sure. And, and you, you kind of touched on two points there because you mentioned how there's been a massive increase in institutions uh, getting into the game, especially at Huobi, but also the DeFi craze. But ha has institutions, do, do the two really connect? Have, have institutions really gone in on DeFi or, or are institutions more excited? You know, uh, Huobi recently launched, you know, uh, Bitcoin options, derivatives. Uh, is that what's bringing the institutions in? Is it the timing kind of of the global market that's bringing them in or more that more mature products like derivatives and option trading have hit the crypto market? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So first, I think with institutions, there are, there are more risk averse, right? And they need more regulate, regulated market. So that's why, you know, when, when, when in 2017, even though ICO is so, so hot and everybody is, you know, looking at crypto and having attention into the crypto space, an institution was still waiting because that's where, you know, the regulations were not clear enough and, and uh, risk management is not good enough. And also the product is not mature enough and platforms like exchanges couldn't really offer the same level of professional, professional services to those institutional customers. And they were still waiting, you know, for, for us to be more mature to accept their like old money. And I think as for now, uh, first, first of all, to answer your question about DeFi, we don't see a lot of institutions trading DeFi yet. It's just because you know the liquidity uh, and also, also the volume is not going um, big enough. It's just a smaller project and stuff. We see um, institutions trading you know major coins like BTC and the products like you were saying, um, derivatives products, uh, just like you know the things that were they were used to. Uh, to trade in the um, traditional financial world. Um, so when we um, decided to, to build our institutional BU in the beginning of 2019, and that's kind of the vision that we were, we were going for, right? To, to, to be the gateway, uh, to take institutional um, customers on Hobby. And, and uh, so there are a few things that we did. So first is to get our, our products ready. Uh, when they see the need to urge to trade crypto, they need a good and smooth fiat on ramp. So we've been working on that. And uh, right now, Hobi have uh, more than a dozen of, uh, of different currencies fiat on ramp, fiat gateway. And we, uh, the most recent one is US dollar, and we were really excited to see that. And we also built our, our brokerage um, um, product to, to allow you know, smooth transactions from, from fiat to crypto. And then you know, once they have crypto, then um, there are basically two needs, right? First, they need, they need to trade. And maybe second, they need asset management. So we launched um, this new um, asset management platform for institutions to be able to to just uh, when they hold crypto, they know what to do with it. Um, they can they can then subscribe our, our um, um, asset management platform, uh, or if they choose to trade, um, depends on what, what type of um, trader you are. If you're high frequency or you're just um, a market maker or you, you're like low frequency trader, whatever you want, we have a team of. Um, 10 years plus experiences, professional, um, you know, financial background team who built and tailored those product for them. We, we launched um, Perpetual Swap this year in March, and then we launched our options in, uh, in September. So right now, Huobi offers a, a, um, a full set of products, um, derivatives products, futures swaps, and we are launching our uh, USDT, USDT um, um, perpetual swaps in next, uh, actually next month. So by oh. then we'll be having a full set of products that can meet all, all of their, their needs for trading. And uh, so that's from the product side. And also I, I, I touched upon a little bit before um, for regulations. It's so important for, for institutional players. They need regulated market. And we were so excited to see, you know, how how fast this um, this this and how much progress we've had this year. You know, take Japan as an example. We 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 know that it, it took the country years to clearly 
fines, crypto asset regulations, and they're known to have one of the most strict requirements for crypto exchange into assets. But m m uh, much progress has been made this year. Japan, you know, in May, um, the FSA, their regu regulatory agency that now services overseas crypto assets, and now it mean, enact new regulations to further legitimize crypto exchanges and assets. And, um, you know, it's, it's lucky for Huobi that we, we have a um, local exchange will be Japan and now licensed by by them. Um, you know, we have it since 2018 and now we have the license for uh, running the exchange in Japan and also a platform token, HT token is now a fully compliance asset in local in, uh, in local country. And it just, uh, you know, Japan is just one example, but a lot of the other countries have been coming with clear regulations that's and licenses that's making institutions feel more secure and they want to trade crypto and they know where to trade crypto. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so important. I mean, like you mentioned, they need the stability. They look for uh, the good regulation and, and, and they are risk averse. And so I think that's very crucial what you're saying. And uh, so my question is this, because Huobi has been offering such good uh, products and service, really aiming for these institutions and in, in, kind of giving them a, a, a trusted source, a trusted name that they can rely on. You know, if you look at the traditional finance, it, it does seem like uh, it is broken down into uh, firms that service institutions and firms that service the retail uh, investor. In crypto, does one have to make that differentiation? And, and which one is what will be, you know, focused on? Are, are they more focused on the institution, more on the retail? Or, or do you guys think that you could actually balance and service both? Um, so first of all, I think in, uh, in crypto trading, it's a ecosystem. You need to have retail and you need to have institutions. Um, you know, that's where, uh, you have good liquidity and that's how the whole ecosystem will grow, you know, as a whole. And we didn't really choose any, uh, between the two of them, but we are, uh, we started as exchange serving retail. I think, um, you know, like everybody knows in this space that we, we, you know, when we first started as exchange in 2013, um, most of our customers were retail and we were, we were, um, you know, better at serving retail clients um, than serving uh, institutions. Um, and we also have the vision to, um, to empower 100 million household worldwide to own their crypto assets. That's our new vision that's just came out this year. And I think that's, you know, every time I see it, I feel so excited. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, my, it's my dream now too, um, at, at, as Hobie's vision. And, uh, uh, but like I said earlier, in, in 2019, when we see from our data and we see that the trend that institution with with old money and from traditional space are now looking into crypto they're getting into crypto it's just the the market share that we just have to capture and uh we we asked a a a, a top exchange we just feel it's our um it's our responsibility to to build this platform that's you know regular enough that's stable enough that's that's uh, that's just uh, secure enough to serve those those institutions for them to to be able to have this gateway to coming into crypto to feel welcome to feel you know comfortable enough to trade crypto that's how the whole space can really scale and that's why we decided to do it and luckily we you know we were we were doing it uh, right according to the data and uh, um, very very happy to see that our institutional uh, customers are are happy trading with Bobby. Mm. Well, you, you did mention this this idea and this vision to trying to get like hundred million households uh, owning crypto. And you know, that, that, that is uh, you know, such a good, uh, I think, goal. Cause right now the, you know, the, the technology is innovating so quickly and there's so many projects out there working on improving the technology, but there also needs to be the other side where people are actually trying to get people to actually in to this, to this uh, crypto sphere and into this ecosystem. Um, and, and so kind of, this is a two part question kind of, how did you decide on this number? I mean, obviously you got to pick a number and you want it to be high, but, but you know, where is, how many currently in the world, according to you guys' estimates, where are we at in terms of that number, in terms of households that are owning crypto and how far away are we from, from that 100 million household goal that, that Hobie is, is, is trying to get to? Yeah, well, you know, when we see a hundred million households, uh, so first of all, we are, we are already serving, um, 
uh, more than 10 million users worldwide. So it's it's uh, it's you know less than 10 x for for we and then we we just we just feel it's 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 a big goal, but it's definitely doable. But I mean, the more the more sense of the number, it's really making crypto more accessible. So a big part of driving crypto adoption is making it more accessible to all type of users across many different markets. And we take a product driven approach in power users on our platform. So we have set the vision to empower 100 million households to own crypto. And we're confident in this because we're you know, executing a continuous strategy to achieve the goal. So as of today, uh, we rank the first among um, you know, top exchanges regarding um, aggregate funds deposited. It's, it's kind of like the uh, asset under management on the exchange. We are currently managing more than 5.2% of entire digital asset market to capitalization and noting that it's um, only used Serious assets. We're not talking about, you know, because as exchange, we do own um, a lot of our, our, our in-house assets too. But the deposit of funds is, is, the, is the least uh, possible and most meaningful indicator to measure exchange true liquidity. And, um, you know, having enough liquidity and good liquidity is the only way that for this huge number of customers to be able to trade any on any exchanges. And uh, we, we do have a global presence. And uh, as I said earlier, we opened a dozen different via gateways um, to, you know, and uh, license it worldwide, in, including Japan, uh, Gibraltar, Thailand, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be continuing to, to uh, apply for more licenses. And that's, you know, being able to have a license and being a, a, a fully regulated exchange is the only way that you can attract this big number of uh, customers. When we say a hundred million households, it's more like crypto is not a, uh, uh, how do I say, like it's, so right now crypto is still a very uh, uh, unique kind of uh, uh, asset that you may own your portfolio. But when we know that there are a mil hundred million households that own crypto, it's gonna just be a common asset. And that's kind of our, 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 our vision. And um, uh, in, quarter, in, in order for, for, uh, for customers to be more uh, easily uh, uh, accessible to cryptos, um, so we, we did a new uh, product recently. It's our, our latest uh, edition in crypto savings. It's a crypto investment product with a stable interest rate. And it's suitable for, for users who are new to crypto space, you know, who want to just earn more stable interest before they, you know, start to explore uh, crypto trading and try to learn every single, you know, projects out there and with all the mining in DeFi, it's, it's a very hard um, thing to learn to pick up at first. And it's very, very big, you know, entry barrier. So we wanted to offer these crypto savings to users who are already knowing, you know, there's this thing going on, this crazy going on in crypto, but I just don't know how I can be part of it. So as a user who's onboarded to full be, um, crypto savings should be a, a must use product as it is, you know, incredibly flexible to set up new accounts and also to just earn um, stable, you know, return. And uh, and just uh, it's, it's just the things that we're continually doing for for making crypto um, easy to use and easy for for uh, more friendly for just uh, you know traditional users to put their money into crypto and get a, get a taste of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I think it's a very unique time that we're we're living in and, and, and that who is you know acting in, where historically you know obviously you want to have you know well you come from traditional finance you want to have a varied portfolio you know you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. Uh, and, and historically, one of the one of those portions would be to put your money in a savings account. You'd probably get your three percent, your one percent, what, whatever the you know the interest rate is. Then, and I think we live in a very unique time because of the coronavirus. You know where uh, interest rates have kind of dropped down so low, where you know a person who doesn't even know crypto, who who just wants to put his money in the bank, he's seeing point one percent interest. He's, he's seeing his money just sit there and make no return. Uh, absolutely no gains. And so I think that because of this unique time we're living in and the unique financial you know, status, uh, especially where the interest rate is at, this does provide a, a really interesting opportunity for crypto savings accounts uh, like Wobi uh, ha has offered where, hey, I might not be so into crypto, but I, 
I want to make, you know, some return on my money. I don't want to sit there and have 0% interest. Um, but I'm not yet ready for the crazy world of DeFi. Like you mentioned, you know, with yield farming, it's, it's, it's really uh, a pretty high barrier of entry for a lot of people, especially if you're not well-versed in crypto. Uh, so this does seem like that middle ground product. And have you guys seen that on, on your end? Have you kind of seen that because of, uh, you know, COVID-19, uh, there, there has been uh, more of a more of a, of a wave towards uh, cryptocurrencies. Yeah. So just uh, touch upon on the interest rate and stuff. So the current annual yield for deposit USDT eight percent, while deposit in BTC yields three three point five percent. So uh, wow. that's that, uh, that's just uh, the numbers. And uh, you know, speaking of. Um, you know, crypto in the current global economy to say that 2020 has been a very challenging year uh, would be a, a, a you know understatement. But there's always a, a silver lining. The world has was already you know moving toward a digital economy, but this year's event, like you know the whole you know cro um, coronavirus pandemic and increasingly you know this this uh, turmoil and everything that's 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 happening. And first, let's address uh, the whole pandemic. COVID-19 is something that no one could have anticipated. It's a, it's a total like black swan event that has completely, you know, put our lives and um, global economy in a, in, a, in a very hard situation. Well, countries around the world are making progress um, and, you know, Hobby Charity is doing a lot of things, but the e effects of this whole COVID-19 situation on the traditional financial market will be long lasting. I, 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 well, it's hard to say, but I, I do think so. And you, in addition to the uncertain economic landscape, there are major, you know, movements as well, uh, such as, you know, the, the U.S. president's election and, um, you know, ongoing uh, friction between China and other nations like India, U.S. We can continue to expect some level of uh, market volatility for for foreseeable future. But um, there is a very natural part of, of of um, market cycles, I think it's just very natural. Like you know, in the 20, 20, 2008, that's where we we had the the, the whole like um, economy downturn and stuff. It just does uh, natural market market cycles, and most experienced traders will agree that volatility do offers a potentially um, you know advantage opportunity. So beyond trading opportunities in uh, volatile markets, the current macroeconomic landscape creates a perfect environment for Bitcoin and other crypto to really thrive as an alternative asset class for both, um, like we mentioned before, retail and institutions. Government and central banks around the world has responded to this pandemic with very aggressive uh, monetary policy measures like you know quantitative easing and stuff. You don't need to be an economist to know that you know, printing large sum of money in a, in a short period of, 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 of time will, will carry a high inflation risk. And some countries are already seeing the impacts of inflation in basic necessities like, like food prices. So while the response of government and central banks are, are well-intentioned, it reveals the limits of, of government-issued currencies. And that's not to say, you know, cryptocurrency should, should replace all fiat currencies, but they can actually provide hedge against inflation and future monetary policy measures. So um, the best example, of, of course, will be Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital asset, you know, with a, a finite supply, and especially you know, with the with the whole having event um, happened this year. You no, know, it's it just uh, it's it's a very good asset uh, for you to be to be to be to be um, trade or just hold in your portfolio. So first of all, no central organization or nation that controls Bitcoin. Changes in monetary policies have no direct imp impact on Bitcoin. Um, and it cannot be manipulated by any one person. And it has been you know, around for, 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 for long enough. Um, Bitcoin, you know, with the recent having, like I said, cutting the money rewards in, uh, in half Bitcoin, it's, you know, it's, 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 I think it's, a, it's no better time than, than ever. Um, being a, a good um, alternative asset for for both retail and institutions to to hold, so I, I think yeah, and people are are, are becoming you know uh, increasingly aware of how adaptable digital asset, assets are um, with with Libra with uh, Chinese DSAP. It just um, I think the whole world is educating uh, people about 
um, digital currencies. And you know, excited to see, and very, I can't wait to see how much progress we're going to make in this year, and next year. I mean, yeah, th this is this is kind of what us, you know, er, crypto early adopters have been saying for so long, which is, you know, you don't realize it, but your 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 currency, your regular fiat currency that you were using before you discovered cryptocurrency uh, is very affected by the political landscape, by the world economy, uh, by a lot of things that uh, kind of are out of control. And, and, and especially when it comes to, to uh, government financial po uh, policy, where they're printing money without actually attaching more value to it. And that's obviously going to, anyone could see that's going to eventually lead to inflation at some point down the road, if not already. Um, and, and we were saying that for so long, and then now because of Corona uh, and th this once in a lifetime, you know, uh, event has kind of, you know, forced our, our prediction to come true, I think a lot earlier than, 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 than even the most diehard Bitcoin fan has seen. So has the markets reacted? Has, has Bitcoin reacted like you thought it would have, um, you know, in, in reaction to this, you know, once in a lifetime Corona event where governments are printing money, where there's a lot of uncertainty now in the world, you know, is this Bitcoin's time to shine and, and has it stepped up to the plate? Well, you know, um, as I said before, I, I think, um, you know, this is, this is a, such an important time for cryptocurrency and Bitcoin to, to, uh, to shine, of course, uh, with, the, with the whole, you know, uh, COVID-19 situation and with, with central banks, digital currencies and, um, and a lot of, uh, you know, the Bank of England is also leading collective research digital currencies along with some of the world's largest central banks like Bank of Canada, Bank of Japan, European central banks and uh, Swiss national banks. And all of this is, is driving new interest in crypto across all categories, retail institution, government, and there's been a surge in adoption and trading volume. And that's just the number that we are seeing. And the landscape is heating up as we're now getting into DeFi season. And we're, we're, we're you know, like the, we're DeFi season is booming from June until now. It's only three months. And as I said, we've seen this huge, huge, huge increase of total value locked in DeFi. And we're expecting to see a lot more activity in this, you know, in the, in the next quarter of 2020. And I think um, just from, from our data speaking, um, from tr from trading volume, from uh, numbers of, of um, customers, new new customers into crypto space, we've been seeing such an increase uh, from the from the day of uh, uh, March 12th. You know that's where Bitcoin Bitcoin uh, price really really dropped and uh, hit the bottom. Uh, but from that day till now, we've seen a, a large increase in trading volume, in number of, of actively uh, trading customers, and in number of uh, newly registered customers, and the number of total um, assets deposited into exchanges. I, I think it, it, it looks like a, uh, we are going to have, you know, I think we're going to even have a, a better year this year and next. Well, let's hope so. I mean, growth is always so exciting, especially in this, you know, kind of relatively brand new industry uh, that we work in. So, you know, uh, it's, it's pretty easy when we're growing to, you know, not just have 2x, but, 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 but 50x and, and, and bigger and bigger, uh, which is always very exciting to see. And uh, I think one, one of the things driving that, uh, you, you know, we keep on speaking uh, about Bitcoin and, 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 and it does have, uh, it does play a very essential role um, in, in, in the crypto sphere, in this ecosystem. Uh, but historically, you know, one of the big knocks, or one of its biggest use cases, one of its biggest knocks was, you know, th this is where the, it's the store of value. You, you got to hold it. You got to hold it. Uh, don't trade it. You believe in it, so you're going to hold it. And I, I think recently, um, you, know, you know, we no longer have to choose. You no longer have to say, I either believe in Bitcoin, I'm going to hold it, keep it here, and, and as a store of value, or... I want to trade cryptocurrencies. I want to use altcoins. Um, you don't have to choose because of the tokenization of Bitcoin. Uh, Huobi has their HBTC coin, which is doing tremendously well. Um, there's over more than $1 billion worth of Bitcoin that's been tokenized for DeFi. Um, do you think that this is a turning point for crypto? Uh, you know, when big exchanges like Huobi are, are, are easily offering the tokenization of Bitcoin so that you no longer just have to huddle Bitcoin, 
you could actually have that Bitcoin that you're holding actually working for you uh, over in the smart contract space over in DeFi. Yeah, so um, I think that's a very big question. So for the exchange, it's more about you know creating a robust market for users and being able to to provide a, a variety of products for our users. So um, another way we're we're paving the way for so for widespread adoption of crypto is by strengthening the market with more liquidity, right? A mother, a, a wider variety of. Uh, of, of digital assets and uh, and also trading products and we're also investing into building a digital asset ecosystem so for example will we have different listing channels and because we see the whole DeFi season and um, you know we see the urge of people trading different coins but for a lot of the DeFi products out there because it's decentralized we don't know the team and we are not sure how it's gonna go in five or ten years, but you know, even even like the ICO season, maybe only ten of the you know thousands and thousands of points will actually succeed. Succeed, but will we want to be the one who supported those ten successful projects along the way? So how do we do it? How do we provide opportunities for for customers to trade those assets, but also know that they are risks within and be risk um, uh, um, you know aware of the risks so we've um, coming was coming up with new listing channels um, we, we we launched a new token listing pay, uh, a, a pass it's called Hobi Inno Hub so Inno Hub is a central part of Hobi Global's main page and it's a key strategy for deployment of um, of our our, our blockchain um, um, uh, strategy. We open this pipe uh, with 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 this pathway with open attitude, and we can we can um, list uh, tokens like you know FYI, FY FY two, um, first tokens that landed on on our our global ob observation zone, and uh, we we can we can then provide customers the opportunity to trade them, but with a uh, limitation on on the token total token that they can hold. So that you know we're protecting them along the way, and uh, we are also you know offering DeFi liquidity mining. Um, uh, uh, we um, we offer this new product with, uh, with you know HT token liquidity mining, and it's it's a it's a just a new topic for 2020. And DeFi is developing at a very rapid speed with you know uh, with with changes as tape as a as type of new layouts in digital finance. And many expect DeFi to become the foundation of a worldwide open finance ecosystem and give birth to a number of great products with huge wealth opportunities. As, as a leading company in the blockchain space, we've been taking it upon itself to support and lead development of DeFi. So we introduced a DeFi section with dozens of new products and then convert uh, multiple applications in business like you know, lending, prediction, DAX, derivatives, and public chain, etc. We also announced our DeFi Labs and uh, you know established a DeFi alliance. And actually today we just announced a second a bunch of uh, products that's join our alliance. And we strongly believe that you know the centralized world will push the whole industry forward, greater efficiency, and give more people financial freedom in the long run. So um, some examples. Last week we started a DeFi liquidity campaign and we we kicked off with uh, with five million dollar worth of blockchain assets for DeFi liquidity mining. Um, and uh, you know more rounds will be held after after total 10 million USDT worth of uh, uh, blockchain assets and rewards all generated from DeFi liquidity mining will be distributed to all qualified participants uh, who, who you know stake um, our, our token H HT or HPT and we're looking for you know to accept more tokens in the in the way and to be a more you know uh, widely accepted ecosystem and in terms of staking we've you know as you said uh, announced that the H token series uh, HPTC and a lot of the other ones and um, um, a, a, a practice uh, uh, about you know like 5,000 HBTC have been minted, and a lot of things that's going on in in our um, you know DeFi labs and the things that we do. And apart from expanding the DeFi market, the core of our business still lies with CeFi, right? We we especially you know. Um, focused on the derivatives that, like I mentioned earlier. So Hobi Futures has seen um, total trading volume uh, of eight 
877 billion US dollar in the first six months of 2020. And that's just how big the market is. And that's how, you know, well, Hobie Futures is doing. And increasingly, Q1, which was a good quarter for crypto space, have been matched by Q2 uh, on, on, on Hobie. And um, we've seen, you know, um, the perpetual swaps being increasing, increasingly popular. And we've seen auctions, new product has been accepted by our customers. And with the perpetual swap, we outperformed Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin's largest uh, 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 perpetual swap uh, competitor uh, BMAX and uh, in, in such a short amount of time. So we've managed to push new boundaries against other, you know, well-established um, exchanges while it comes to, you know, future trading volume and uh, and other type of products. And uh, it's, I have to say, it's been a very, very challenging year for Hobi, even though we're seeing uh, trading volume is so big and new customers coming into space. But we've we've feeling the pressure from our, our peer exchanges and now you know DEX um, and this whole um, you know evaluation that's uh, that that's that's uh, evaluation that's uh, that's that's happening in the DeFi space and everything. But we just have to be you know focused and always listen to what the community has to say and offer their uh, offer them the products they they want and the services that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And especially when it's it's really interesting when you're listening to the crypto community, as specifically as a community, uh, it's very interesting, very 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 loud, very opinionated, um, and, and they they kind of believe in what they believe in, and um, and and so I think the the what comes out of that is that someone who's listening um, or, or kind of keeping an eye on, on the crypto space today, all they hear is DeFi, 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 and and, I, and there is a tremendous amount. Uh, going on, being locked into DeFi, um, and, and it's so new and exciting. And so it, it, it makes sense why everyone will speak about it. But, you know, we're having two conversations here, one about DeFi, but also one about institutions. You know, if you look at the numbers that Hobie's doing on their futures, on the derivatives, I mean, it, it, it makes DeFi look tiny in, in comparison. So while DeFi is very, let's say, a sexy word right now and, and very hot um, on the retail side, but at, at the end of the day, will it be you know, the institutional trading, you know, like Hobie's futures and, and, and derivatives uh, that really serve as the backbone uh, for the cryptocurrency market, very much like it does uh, in the traditional markets where, you know, the, the institutions really keep it things stable uh, and, and the backbone there. So uh, first, like you said, the DeFi market, the whole, the total, um, total market for DeFi is still, you know, it's early stage and small. Uh, but it's definitely something that's very innovative and we just have to keep an eye on and, uh, you know, keep up with the market and uh, keep uh, keep developing new products and services. That's why we, we started this new BU, the DeFi Labs, and doing exciting stuff. Uh, but like I said earlier, SACS is still, you know, like centralized exchange still our, our, um, our main business and we have to we have to, you know, focus on that and uh, and uh, keep up with uh, with uh, um, you know expectations coming from our customers and uh, from institutional side, um, spot trading, derivative trading, and also OTC, they're all big and um, um, it's just a different type of customers have different needs and we're continuing to uh, interview them, to talk to them, to see you know what their their thoughts are. Um, on on the DeFi space and how they can participate and um, you know uh, trying to find a way for the whole ecosystem to 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 move forward to be more more lively and uh, and also you know it's it's just it's just uh, interesting to see the gap between crypto and traditional space take options as a good example you know options in traditional finance it's it's the market is so huge. It's, it's big and but in 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 the in the um, crypto world even you know they're a bit uh, the largest options exchange out there um their trading volume still it's 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 only like a tenth of um of the trading volume on on hobby's uh hobby futures so options so small compared to futures and we are also exploring to see why this is happening and how we can bring the gap uh, you know, nar narrow down the gap and 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 really fix what's what's what the problems are 
and uh, to to really make the whole market bigger and make the make the market more and more welcome to to institutional players. And and besides, you know, even though Hobi is um, seven years old, only seven years old, we just had our birthday like um, yesterday, actually. And uh, thank you. Uh, we're, we're baby compared to, you know, traditional business leads, but we're like ancient already in the crypto space. We're seven years old, we're so old. And because of that, <laughs> we, feel the, uh, we feel the obligations, responsibilities, always be there and to lead the market, to explore where things should go and to be able to offer whatever our customers are looking for. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm always, uh, also curious to see what's going to happen with DeFi and what's going to happen with institutional players. Yeah. Do you, do you foresee, is there a possibility in the future? I mean, you have uh, clearly have a very good relationship with a lot of institutions. Uh, do you hear from them? I mean, it's still so early on, but do you hear from them a, a potential interest in DeFi? I'm sure they're hearing a lot about it, uh, looking into the opportunities. Uh, ha has Hobie been approached to kind of provide, you know, right now DeFi is a little too wild west, a little, probably way too uh, risky for, for institutions, but uh, have institutions come to you guys to try to see what kind of products that you guys could could help uh, get them exposure to DeFi without all the, the the craziness of just one bug, you know, or just you know just one chef know me, you know. I'm, I'm sure institutions don't want to have to deal with developers, uh, you know, who could just copy code and and, and not audit it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely. Like you know, DeFi is. It's so hot now, and everybody's talking, even uh, for institutions, yes. So for market makers, they want to know if they can do market making for some of the DeFi projects. And uh, and also, uh, like you said, you know, there were problems with the contracts with the calls. And um, with the whole idea of the Inno hub, we, when we list token, it means that Hobi team uh, our, our, our risk management team, our audit team, they've already looked at the, um, the contracts and um, we're, you know, we're putting our credits um, you know, behind those tokens that we list so that uh, institutions feel more comfortable with trading. They, like some of them, they don't trust DAX um, as much as they trust us, you know, just because we are already a company with 1600 uh, you know employee and we've hold licenses and we've been you know putting years of developing this this robust system and stuff so we have this trust and bond bond built with institutions and i think that's one of the core competence that just can't be replaced by by DAX. yeah and, and you know uh, and and for for uh, opening you know the gateway for for institutions to participate in DeFi and that's the things that you know DeFi Labs is continuing doing and just uh, you know stay tuned and we have exciting news to to announce we are you know as a leading exchange constantly thinking of how to scale the market and making it accessible to both retail and institutions. Well, I mean, it's, like you said, you've only been around for seven years, which is short in human life, long, uh, ancient in, 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 in the blockchain and crypto sphere. Uh, and it's incredible to see the amazing work that Hobie has actually done, uh, both on the retail side and institutional side for adoption. I'm very excited to see uh, what the future brings, Sierra. Uh, thank you so, uh, so much for joining me here and taking the time. And for all of our viewers at home for Reimagine 2020, I'm Yona Hockhauser. Thanks for watching.